STV, votre télé. National Gendarmerie boss Yves Landry Etoga has banned gendarmerie officers from using Android phones during military operations and belonging on social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp as a result of a video which went viral on social media showing their act of inhuman treatment on Cameroonian girls. Plus, Cameroon has today, June 19, joined the globe to commemorate World Sickle Cell Day with the hope that the government equate sickle cell anemia to other pathologies like HIV and AIDS whose treatment is subsidized. Those are my top stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and thanks for joining me, Henry Wana at the Anchor in Douala. We begin this newscast from the National Assembly whereby the newly appointed Secretary General at the National Assembly, Bob Desiree, has been officially commissioned into his functions today by the first Vice President of the National Assembly, Hilarion Eton. Let's have the newly installed Secretary General react shortly after his installation. It is in my habit to work collegially. Uh, I'm aware that I don't know everything and that I have to go upon what uh, my, collabor upon my collaborators to organize the work and I think that working as a team we are going to good we're going to do a good job I think so Secretary General of the National Assembly Desiree Buck reacting then shortly after his installation today Back to one of our lead story, gendarmes have been henceforth banned from using Android phones during military operations and all social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp. The order given by the gendarmerie boss Yves Landry Etoga is as a result of a disturbing video circulating on the social media implicating gendarmerie officers in the violation of human rights. Peter Sose reports. The Defense Secretary of State in charge of the National Gendarmerie is taking special measures to contain constant leaks of classified information and recorded deviant acts by Gendarmerie officers. In a strongly worded circular, Galax Eve Etoga has prescribed zero tolerance for officers who create or take part in social media forums where information is circulated. Authorization must come from hierarchy if such forums were to be created. The use of Android phones during security operations has also been prescribed for these officers, while gendarmes who own Facebook profiles revealing their status as military officers must shut down their accounts without delay. The move comes on the heels of the release of a dehumanizing video of gendarmes torturing two women in Bali, Northwest region days ago that went viral during public outrage. The Gendarmerie Corps has been at the center of fierce criticisms in recent times for allegedly instigating rights violations, especially in the handling of the Anglophone crisis. Videos taken by gendarmes themselves showcasing torture have been used by human rights groups to nail the government in their reports. Though the measure is aimed at giving the Gendarmerie a good public image, critics lament that nothing has been said about continuous rights violations from its elements as echoed in the reports of right groups. A civil society organization known as Women, Voter and Sons will in the weeks ahead organize a campaign to get the population involved in voter registration. The information was revealed today in Douala at a press conference. Peter Sose report. 2018 remains an electoral year in Cameroon, but the majority of Cameroonians are not interested in election matters, despite numerous campaigns to get them involved. Civil society actors believe that voter apathy stems from ignorance on the part of the population. Do they know that they are exercising a power? This is a power, not only a duty, not only an obligation. It is how to exercise their power. 
because this is a power. We appoint the head of state, he appoints ministers, generals, army, judges. This is, that means that we are above. Potential voters have expressed concerns over the credibility of ELECAM as an independent body capable of delivering free, fair and transparent elections. Their role, however, cannot be undermined and electors can help the organ attain its objectives. Not criticize ele ELECAM without watching what they are doing, without know knowing what uh, the difficulties in what they're doing and how we can help them to, to jump on these difficulties and to do their work independently, fairly. Potential voters have also raised fears over the troubling security climate of the country and civil society actors believe it must be given urgent attention before the next election. This election can, can be possible in Cameroon. But will, will this be a good election, fair, that we can trust? Something good can it can come from this kind of election? And that is a question. Everybody can answer that. At a press conference in Douala Tuesday, Women, Voters and Sons, a civil society group has announced it would be carrying out a campaign on voter registration at the Ndokoti runabout Thursday. It is aimed at drawing public attention to the importance of taking part in the electoral process. It would be throwing its weight behind Cameroon Oboso, Mouvement Onzo Inscrit, as well as the NOW movement, already championing the cause. Elecam says there are 12 million potential voters in the country, but just slightly half that number has so far registered on the electoral list. The sum of over 2 billion francs have been allocated as the 2018 budget to finance developmental projects in the Bakasi Peninsula. The different projects were reviewed recently in Limbe during the first committee meeting of the Bakasi Development Programme. Pelagi Ekweni reports from Limbe. With the vision to improve on socio-economic conditions around the Bakasi Peninsula, located in the Division, the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Philemon Yang, created a committee on the 21st of August 2017 known as the Bakasi Peninsula Development Programme in a bid to reinforce development and repopulation of the Bakasi Peninsula. In this slide, representatives of the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development and other stakeholders who make up this committee rallied in the city of Limbe for the first time to draw up budgets for ongoing projects in the division. It was time for us to put on the organigram uh, of, of this project as well as draw the budget for the project and authorize whosoever to improvement also for the project. To the senior divisional officer von Zian, who doubles as a vice president of the structure, the underlying need for such projects in Bakasi cannot be overemphasized. The people of Bakasi uh, a Cameroon territory by now, after 2002, Court of Appeal judgment and the 2006 Green, uh, Green Tree Accord was not really benefiting from government action as it is supposed to be. Because we noticed that most of those who were appointed to, to the project in, in this peninsula were based at the Prime Minister's office. But now, with the presence of a resident coordinator, I think life in Bakasi will never be the same again. In the meantime, a total of 2 billion 101 million 900,000 francs have been allocated as activity budget for the year 2018 to fuel activities such as infrastructure and amenities, socio-economic activities, security, action research, communication and mobilization, as well as management in this landlocked territory, rich in oil and fish resources, situated in the Division. 
Economy Planning and Regional Development Minister Alamin Osman May today received in audience Swiss Ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Pedro Lazeri. Discussion between the two men, we are told, was fruitful. Let's have the Ambassador explain better their point of interest. Uh, well, um, I would have liked to have the same question 15 years ago. <laughs> um, uh, Switzerland. Was a um, at, at the time, uh, Cameroon has no debt to Switzerland. Uh, what we are using are uh, uh, money, which are here in Cameroon, our Swiss money, and uh, we're going to use this money for useful projects. For Cameroonian people in two main uh, areas. The first one is uh, renewable energy and the second one is promotion of private sector. Two strategic sector for Cameroon and where Switzerland has a certain expertise. Some palliative treatment and vaccine kits have been donated to members of the Cameroon Sickle Cell Association here in Douala today. A gift from a non-governmental organization in support of the fight against sickle cell anemia in Cameroon. Sensitization of both patients and parents unfolded at the Sickle Cell Center at the Lacantini Hospital here in Douala. Veronica Aje reports. Health experts say even though it's possible for a sickle cell patient to have children, the risk of infecting the child is high. But if the test and treat method is employed, the risk of infection can be managed. Neonatal is a sacré recommandé. Prenatal screening is recommended because the other methods are sophisticated and we don't have easy access to them at the moment. The prenatal screening comes with the advantage of immediate intervention of tests and treat. We don't do the screening just to know if the child is SS, but to rapidly take measures that will lessen the risk. Prendre dispositions qui vont prévenir l'apparition des symptômes et donc permettre à l'enfant d'avoir une croissance et un développement adapté. Medics also advise that early screening after birth can save the life of the child. It is proven that early start screening and early treatment improve the manifestation and someone may grow up without knowing the complications of the disease. That's the direct benefit of offering an early screening. They also discourage sickle cell patients from procreation. One has the result of the electrophoresis of hemoglobin with AA, that means normal hemoglobin. That means he's not, he will never have a child with SS disease. But if the one has the result of AS, that is the key information about avoiding, avoiding to have a child with someone who is also carrier of the gene. So in any couple, the key information, the tip is having a child always with someone who is AA, if I am AS. Early and regular prenatal care is important if you are pregnant and have the sickle cell disease. Having prenatal visits more often allow the medical officials to keep a close watch on the disease and on the health of the developing baby. We do apologize for that mixed up. That was rather John Paul Sama reporting there about sickle cell patients and pregnancy. We go back to this report by Veronica Aje talking about a donation by an, not a non-governmental organization to the Sickle Cell Association here in Douala, whereby they are supporting the association in the fight against uh, sickle cell anemia in Cameroon. Let's have the report. 25% is the rate at which the Cameroonian population is affected by sickle cell anemia. That is, 25% of the population are carriers of the S gene. True, there are varied methods put in place to fight the lifelong illness, but much is still needed. This junior parliamentarian, alongside his counterparts, believe 
reducing cost of electrophoresis examinations and increasing sensitization campaigns could be a plus. Parce que vous voyez bien qu'il y a un seul centre d'intégré de dépanocitaire, ce n'est que dans la ville de Douala. As part of activities to support the fight against sickle cell anemia on this June 19, some vaccines have been donated to the National Association of Sickle Cell Patients by an NGO. Sickle cell anemia is not only costly to parents, but would eventually make life unbearable for infected persons. During this gathering, it was equally disclosed that there is just one center for sicklers, which is at the Lacantini Hospital here in Douala. Sickle cell anemia is a disease which medical doctors say can be avoided if each couple car each if, if at all each couple carries out an electrophoresis test, one affected the growth, once affected, the growth of the child is rather complicated. Darlene Fager. On a sick is the trepanocytic trotter. It is in the year 2001, at the age of 23, that Omaru Lamin, now 23 years old, discovered he has been living with sickle cell anemia since childhood. C'est 41 ans cette année. Donc, au début, personne ne savait que c'était trépanocyté. Before the detection of the inherited blood disorder at the Lacantini Hospital, after a severe crisis, the father of two had gone through periodic pains on the abdomen, joint and chest, and other complications. His multiple visits to different health facilities yielded no positive results. We visited many hospitals and were told each time that it's a normal disease. It is only after a visit to Lacantini Hospital that we were told I had sickle cell and drilled on the disease. The brilliant student back then watched his performance change from good to mediocrity. I was a smart student in primary school and college with good grades, one of the best in mathematics. But sickle cell pulled me down and I had to drop school. Despite multiple health challenges faced in the past, Umaru has succeeded to live a normal life sensitizing family and friends on the importance of early and effective screening. Linda Nanko, another sickle cell patient, explains that though living with sickle cell can be challenging, one can still live a normal and active life through healthy living, constant talk with the doctor, and proper skin hygiene. She also advised other patients to stay warm all the time, avoid intense physical activities, and follow all instructions of their medical doctor. Persons already affected by the disease, we are being told, have to constantly take vaccines, as we hear in this report by Veronica Aji. Sickle cell, a group of blood disorders typically inherited from parents, continues claiming lives of children and adults around the globe. In the developed world, average life expectancy is between 40 to 60 years, while in the less developed world, it is not up to 40. Few who succeed to cross 40 do not go scot-free. Sicklers are thus advised to take vaccines that could help protect their already fragile immune system from infections. It's just to take care of the sickle cell patient. You know, they are subsequently to, to be infected by many diseases. So when we give them vaccine, it's just to protect them, to avoid them having that uh, uh, disease. These medicines, hepatitis B vaccine and Nemo 23, targets children of a particular age group due to their frail nature. Because we, we hope that they need that than people older than 18. 
Huh? It is not just for them, but because we know that they need that. A total of 563 people have been targeted in Bafusam, Yaoundé and Douala by the Sickle Cell National Association to receive the vaccine. Sickling crisis lasts between five to seven days and could leave behind decreased immune reactions, leg ulcers, spontaneous abortion during pregnancy, chronic kidney failure and stroke from progressive narrowing of blood vessels. Now talk education in this newscast. Over 28,000 candidates have begun writing probatoire d'enseignement secondaire général in centers around Cameroon. The exams which target students of premier shall end this Friday, as we end this report by Veronica Aje. Minutes to start time, instructions are being read to exam candidates. It is Tuesday, June 19, day one of Probatoire d'enseignement secondaire général 2018 edition. An exam written by students of Premier that is lower sixth in the English subsystem of education. <laughs> In one of the centers here in Douala, students were checked thoroughly before gaining access into examination halls, from shoes to uniform pockets to limit cheating. Going by the exam timetable, just two subjects are on the board today, and closing time is 4 p.m. Over 28,000 candidates have between this Tuesday and Friday, June 22nd, to give out their best with the hope of getting to terminal in the next academic year. We should be getting to our foreign... Officially, Russia has spent close to $3 billion on 12 new or upgraded stadiums. At least another $8 billion has been spent on infrastructure. But was it good value for the money? The discussion of the efficiency of the championship in Russia, like in Brazil, is the discussion of economic efficiency of the wedding dress. On one hand, it's necessary. It makes everybody happy. The exact economic efficiency definitely cannot be defined in American uh, quarterly financial reports. It's a long-term story. We still hope to, to become not only hockey country, but football country. Brazil hosted the last World Cup in 2014 at a cost of $11 billion. Four years later, many of their traveling fans feel short-changed. Comparing Brazil with Russia, the infrastructure here is much better than ours. This is the biggest number of tourists that Moscow has ever seen. And in total, they're doubtless spending billions of rubles having a good time. But after they've all gone home in four weeks, Russia hopes there will be a longer-term benefit to hosting the World Cup. The $15 billion investment is aimed at giving Russia an image makeover in the eyes of the world, even as it faces sanctions over its invasion of Ukraine. Putin, with all this strength, pretends that all that is not important for him. Despite sanctions, we conduct such a gorgeous World Cup. Despite sanctions, we go ahead with the war in Syria, and the world has no right to lecture us. And the people enjoy that until the very moment that they start feeling that for all this pleasure, they are paying out of their own pockets. It is right now that they start feeling that. First to feel it are the middle-aged. On the opening day of the World Cup last week, the government announced a gradual rise in the pension age from 60 to 65 for men, and a bigger jump, 55 to 63 for women. 
62-year-old Eva says most Russians are taking it in their stride. It wasn't really unexpected. Probably they thought the championship, the euphoria, will somehow smooth out the effect. There was a joke going around. Yesterday I had four years until pension age. Today I have nine years. And they keep telling us that you can't get your youth back. Russia says the World Cup is partly a gift for its youth. Unforgettable memories and glittering new facilities. The tournament finishes in a month. Its legacy will be measured in the coming years. Henry Richwell for VOA News, Moscow. Still in connection with the 2018 FIFA World Cup ongoing in Russia, soccer fans in Bamenda, the chief town of the Northwest region, are still very hopeful to see an African team cross to the next stage of the competition at the ongoing FIFA World Cup in Russia, despite their poor start of the African teams. Lobembe reports. Despite the fact that Cameroon is not taking part in the ongoing 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia, and with most African teams participating not living up to expectations, sport lovers in the Northwest region are still glued to their TV sets to watch the matches. Why others watch the matches because they are actually football lovers. Others have been influenced by Premier Bet, commonly called Loto or Paris Foot, a game where people predict the scores or outcome of football matches. I'm following it just because I'm a football lover. I, I love football. So I'm behind Portugal, especially CR7. Football is my pleasure. I love football. That's one of my best. I left my work to come and see football. No, if you cannot, if you cannot love football, you cannot play parry food. No, the way you play parry food, you must see the match. I'll be very excited to see whether you have won or not. I am a football fan, so I like watching football. I do play parry food. Those who work in this Premier Bet kiosk say the number of customers increase depending on the teams playing. One hundred and something people can play per day. Yes, when the matches are doing, they increase depending on the days of the matches. Matches are many, they play high, but when they are small number, people don't like to play. Very slow with regard to the, to the situation that is going on in, in Bamenda. So most people, they love to, to play the match because when they play, they have that passion to watch. But what is limited is the, is the finance. Whenever it is time for a football match, football fans turn out massively in bars to follow the match, and snack owners say they have experienced an increase in sales ever since the World Cup started. Many of our customers, they come here to watch the football. By watching the football, they will obviously take a bottle of beer as we have experienced an increase in sales. That does it for today's English primetime newscast on Spectrum Television. We thank you all for watching. See you tomorrow. Good night. STV, votre télé.